Hello everyone, I am Tacit, and as many of you have requested, I am finally going to be going over the Arena minigame. Arena is unlocked after you finish the Broken Spire questline, so as soon as you finish Shegra at the end of the questline there. Uh, in Arena, you get to play on a level playing field against other uh, people's Arena teams. You get to choose a team from your hero, a random common from uh, three different choices, a random rare from three different choices, and a random ultra rare from three different choices. And you do it in a double elimination for these following award rewards. And the main one that you are aiming for are the souls. The souls that you get from Arena is actually the highest amount of soul output you can get anywhere in the game. And it is the best place for uh, farming souls. And with that being said, let's get uh, into actually showing some drafts. I'm going to be showing uh, 25 drafts and basically explaining everything that I can about uh, Arena. And uh, later today, I'll be posting a video of my Let's Play account doing an Arena run if you want to see that. But for, uh, for right now, I'm just going to be explaining how to draft in Arena, as well as some tips and mechanics that you need to know. Uh, first off, I should mention, there are no banners in Arena. No, no matter what you do, there's no way to get uh, extra manas or anything like that. Uh, similarly, no traits that you have will work in Arena. No matter what level your troops are, every single Arena troop will be uh, modified to level 15. And uh, the main thing is Kingdom bonuses also will not work in Arena. So if you happen to have a few, they will not work here. So it puts everyone at basically as level as you can get. The only difference that will slightly skew stats uh, just by a little bit is the hero stats from uh, leveling up. You sometimes get like a random stat every now and then. Uh, will have a, an effect in arena it, uh, class bonuses and things like that do not but for some reason uh, the ones you get from naturally naturally leveling do and the other slight disadvantage is on PC and mobile uh, you get to choose from any weapon in the entire game that you own so people who might like pay for weapons or are like a lot higher level than you or happen to focus on a certain mastery might have uh, better weapons than you but for the most part they won't on uh, the consoles you uh, get to draft from you get to draft your weapon as well so that's not applicable on consoles so uh, I'm gonna go and show uh, 25 drafts now and just show you uh, what you should be picking and my methods behind um, like what you should pick so here we have uh, three uh, three of them here you get to choose from three for every single rarity we have an orc here who just destroys a bunch of skulls and then um, gains attack if he gets damaged we have uh, rock here which uh, takes a lot of mana but it has a really good ability it does uh, 13 damage and then gains uh, eight attack and life but it can only be used once and then we have Taurus here which um, does uh, six damage to the first and then an additional eight to the second if they're damaged so um, of these three you definitely want to go for the rock a uh, rock you would mostly go for because if you can get a yellow mana generator with it it can be really powerful in the second slot so let's recruit this and keep going and now we have uh three more choices i already know from these choices i'm probably going to be going for uh the vampire lord vampire lord is actually really good in arena right now the six true damage uh two to one ratio on the red gems it removes so that is a lot of damage it can basically one shot quite a few uh troops because it's true damage is going to be getting anywhere from about 8 to about 13. So that's enough damage to kill pretty much any arena troop. And then after that he even gains 4 HP. So I know off the bat I'm already going to be picking Vampire Lord. Uh, Succubus you don't need too much. It only drains 7 mana and then places Death Mark. Death Mark's uh, arguably one of the weakest um, effects in the game right now. And the Nymph. The Nymph can be good. It's a little bit slow. It tangles an enemy and then destroys a little bit of armor. Uh, you don't really need Nymph too much unless you need the colors. Uh, one thing to keep in mind when doing Arena is you do want to try covering as many covers, as many colors as you can. Either five or all six is ideal. So let's go for the Vampire Lord. Uh, one other thing which is a little bit weird with how um, Arena is set up right now is uh, after we pick this, you're going to want to remember your rare, the second troop that you pick. Because look, we're going to click this. It, it's a brown purple. And we click recruit. And we can't see its other color right there, which is uh, purple. Um, I don't know why they have it blocked like this, but <laughs> if you happen to forget what it is or what troop you picked, you won't know what uh, colors you need to pick for this last one. Like right now, we know uh, brown, purple, 
yellow, and now we know we need to go red blue because we need that to cover the rest of the colors. Luckily, this red blue is also pretty good. It's Berserker. It gains quite a few attack. Uh, Berserker, you normally don't want to put in the first slot because you want it in the second slot so it can keep racking up uh, more and more damage. Its ability is also pretty good since it starts at a 7 and can go as high as 14. So we're going to pick the Berserker. <laughs> and now ordering. Ordering early on, you normally would never have your hero in the first slot. You can see my hero has uh, pretty high stats because I'm level uh, 1000. But if you're like level 100 or 200 or somewhere low down there, you normally want to put your hero in either the third or the fourth slot. So uh, for this team composition, I'm going to be putting uh, Berserker first, despite saying not to do that. Mostly because you do want to put your highest attack in your first slot. Yeah, in most cases, you are going to want to do that, either the first or second. I have Rock here in second over Berserker because um, it, you, it, you need its ability to charge up before it can actually be good. And Vampire Lord is just here to do damage. And then we just change our weapon to something like a um, anything that's basically green. Probably uh, if you're earlier on in the game, like something like Phoenix Bow or something like that. Maybe even just the um, normal old bow or something. But I'm not going to be showing... Um, all of the weapon picks for most of these because uh, console players don't have them and I'd be here forever if I'm doing all that. So I am going to be uh, going a little bit quicker through quite a few more of these. I just want to do, do the first one a little bit more in depth so I can uh, explain kind of the uh, organization method for doing it. So let's keep going. I'm going to be of course showing 25 drafts right now. So there's the first one and let's keep going. I'll explain as much as I can with every single draft without taking forever. Okay, here we can already see Musketeer. Musketeer, why? Because it does damage. Zombie, no damage. It removes skulls, it's too slow. Um, peasant, a lot of people hate on Peasant. Peasant's actually somewhat decent on Arena, but if you have a damage pick, you definitely want to pick it instead of Peasant. And since we have a damage right here, we want our Musketeer. Okay, right here, we have, well, uh, we see Deep Borer here. Deep Borer may be good, but, um, he has mana conflict with the Musketeer that we already have. So we want to consider Soothsayer or uh, the Hippogriff. Uh, Soothsayer can be somewhat decent. It destroys a purple and then uh, gives all allies uh, plus one magic. Since traits don't work in uh, Arena, he won't have his empowered anything. So he's a little bit weaker than he normally would be. I am going to go for the Hippogriff though, because as you can see, it has nine attack. So we're just going to set it right up front in our uh, front line to uh, do damage. And now we remember those colors are green... Uh, green and yellow so we want to try picking colors that aren't that we're all going to have man mana conflict here we either have to go with a double brown or a double um i mean a double red or a double green and of these choices i'm thinking about leaning towards uh blast cannon here we already have a high attack troop so we don't need a uh, spider queen she does a drain and an armor reduction as well which is uh okay to have but we already have our nine attack troops so we don't need it hobgoblin can be somewhat decent but um, the main reason I want to go for the Blast Cannon is, of course, that Silence. Silence can be pretty powerful in Arena because since there's no status effects, there's very few things that can remove uh, status effects like Silence. So uh, we would want to go with this. It's also a lot tankier than the other choices that we have here. Like, he only has 18 total. This is uh, 24. So he's going to be able to survive against the enemy attacks. So we're going to recruit this. And if we were to align these, it would be there, there. And probably hero and back. Um, you might want to switch these two. It depends if you want to keep silencing or if you just want to keep uh, poking them with damage. It depends what you pick for your hero weapon, of course. So let's keep going. There's a second one. So let's see. What do we get next? Skeleton, Satire, and Taurus again. Uh, of these, we're definitely going to want to go with Skeleton or the Satire. The main reason for this is they both have an extra turn, which makes them uh, pretty good. There's not that many troops that do uh, Frozen off their ability in Arena, so there's not much that can uh, stop that. Uh, skeleton is a bit dependent on having a troop on your team that does high skull damage. And since we don't know if we're going to have high skull damage yet, uh, we can't really pick them. Like, I know right now with my level 1000, I technically could pick a skeleton because I know my hero has 9 attack. But if you're, like, level 50 or really low level, your attack's probably going to be only 6, 7, or maybe 8 in Arena, which isn't particularly high. So we are going to go with the Satire here. So 
we got green. Uh, right here we see summoner, and this is pretty much an instant pick. Anything that can summon in arena is really, really good. Unless there's like an outstandingly powerful uh, damage that you can pick instead, you do want to uh, go with summons in most cases. He gives four life to all allies, plus he summons a level 12 ghoul. But in arena, all um, all troops are currently raised up to 15. So even though it says 12. As soon as it summons a ghoul, that ghoul is going to be level 15. So we definitely want our summoner right here. It doesn't even matter what these other ones are in most cases. So we'll take that. And it also works good with our mana. We are at red. Uh, we have red, purple, green. And based on these colors, uh, we can see that we have to go with Sacred Guardian. And Sacred Guardian is actually a really good pick too. Because it gains as much armor as it deals damage. And uh, Sacred Guardian is one of those picks that's it's almost an instant win if you have it on your team. There are a couple compositions that can beat it. But for the most part, this is like one of the tankiest troops you can possibly have in, in an arena draft. So we definitely want that. And based on what we have, we want to put our tank up front. Um, have our set. And actually the rest works. And this works particularly good because we set this probably to a yellow weapon on our hero. And then uh, as soon as uh, this dies, we'll be replacing it with a brown because ghoul is brown. So this team would actually really dominate arena if you happen to get something like this. But yeah, let's just retire this. Keep going. So let's go into to our fourth draft. Okay, here we have rock again, goblin and zombie. Uh, Goblin is definitely one of the most powerful common picks you can get. I definitely want to get that over Rock. And Zombie, of course, you basically never want to pick Zombie. It removes Skulls, which means you're going to be taking a longer amount of time in Arena. You want to make sure your Arena team is really quick, as quick as possible, so you can uh, get to the 8-win reward. If, of course, your team still needs to be able to win, but you want to be able to get there in a timely fashion. So we're going to take that Goblin. We have quite a few choices here, a lot of uh, decent ones, particularly the Dryad or the Miststalker. The Dryad, of course, would uh, does quite a bit. It heals, or gives 5 life to an ally, then heals them by 6, which brings them closer to their max HP, and then gives them barrier, and then even creates 8 green gems on top of all of that. So it does quite a bit. It would be really good to assist our Goblin, but we also have Miststalker here, and Miststalker does 9 true damage to the weakest, and then uh, gains 3 magic if uh, the enemy dies. So we are, despite uh, Dryad being so powerful, we might want to go with Miststalker here. Dryad is the defensive version of our picks right now, and Miststalker is the offensive. So I'm going to go a little bit more offensive and go with the um, Miststalker. And since that was red-purple, uh, we seem to have mana conflict here. So maybe we should have gone with the Dryad. Unfortunate, but oh well. And in this case, I would probably go with um, probably to the Berserker. Uh, Berserker is pretty good in Arena because it has pretty high damage and it just keeps gaining attack and it already has a high attack. It has the highest HP of any troop in Arena, so it is quite tanky. And it's good against true damage because there's no amount of true damage that's going to be killing that in Arena. You have to at least double shot that before you can kill him. So he's a really good troop damage counter as well. So we are going to pick this up again. And we're just going to order it like this. Uh, Miss Stalker, I'm actually going to be keeping back. Uh, you normally don't want to put your strongest offense all the way in the back. Normally, especially in the early game, you want to put your hero all the way in the back slot because you want it to tank the back in case the enemy has something like a rock worm or anything that might hit the back troop. But you don't want to put something really weak with like only 16 HP in the back because if they have rock worm or something, it's only going to die in two or three shots. So it's going to die way too quick. You want to have it somewhere where it will survive because this is our main damage source in this team. So that's that team. Let's go on to the next one. <clears throat> okay. Number five. Let's see what we have here. Uh, never pick Fortress Gate for any reason whatsoever. Ever. Like, it, just ignore it. <laughs> Zero attack means it is useless. Don't pick it. Ever. <laughs> uh, Sacred Guard. I mean Sacred Guard. Yeah, Scale Guard. Um, definitely one of the more powerful commons these days. Because I got a buff recently in which it poisons an enemy, plus it deals double damage if they're poisoned. So he can deal 16 damage after his second cast. That's quite a bit of damage. And Reaver, Reaver would be decent, but um, our Scale Guard here is more powerful. So we are going to go with the Scale Guard. 
And right here, we even have another Miss Stalker vibe. I'm probably not going to be going for it. Um, of these, I'm uh, Poison Master. It poisons two, which is pretty good. And actually, yeah, I might consider it now because I almost forgot. It does poison two. It was buffed recently. So uh, normally, if we didn't have skill guard, I would consider going with Jackalope here. Uh, Jackalope, mostly because it's Manor Burn. Manor Burn is really powerful in Arena because troops can have anywhere from like 6 to 12 or even higher mana. So if they are all the way at full mana, you're going to be doing quite a bit of extra damage here. You're already doing 5 damage, plus you're doing whatever mana they have. And on top of that, you're converting all um, yellows to blue. So if you happen to have a blue troop on your team, it's going to be assisting that getting mana for you as well. But I am going to go with Poison Master here, mostly because we need free poisons for our Scale Guard. So our Scale Guard does uh, twice as much skull damage. So we got that. And since that was blue-purple, we are going to go with the Grave Knight, regardless of these other ones. Just to make Oh, wait, never mind. It has purple. What am I saying? <laughs> so it was blue-purple, so I mean we're going with the uh, Blade Dancer, because it doesn't have any mana in conflict. And Blade Dancer is actually pretty good, too, especially early on in the uh, damaging. So we're going to place them like this. Scale Guard is our main casting damage. We have our hero back here just to tank our back line. And uh, in our front line, we have a decent attack. Plus, his ability gets weaker as uh, more troops get damaged. So he's good. Uh, Blade Dancer is better to have in your first or second slot because he doesn't do as much later in the match because he focuses. He does damage uh, 2 to 1 based on enemy armor. And they're going to have less armor as the match uh, goes on. So you want to go with something like this. And let's retire and keep going. Okay, number six. Okay, Dwarven Miner. You will never need this ever in Arena, or anywhere for that matter. It does have a 25% to gain 100 gold, but it's going to be too slow, and you don't want it in your team. And now we have Ogre and Glade Warden. Uh, Glade Warden, we don't really need. Um, it deals six damage to an enemy and then removes all greens to boost. Uh, it is fairly weak, and um, we're going to go for Ogre. Ogre has a fairly bad ability, but it has ridiculously high stats for a common. It, outrank, it outranks some of the ultra rares in Arena for how uh, strong it is uh, physically with its stats. So if you see an Ogre on your first pick, it's actually really good to pick it up. Uh, despite it having a really bad ability, it's a really good uh, troop to pick to make sure you have a, a good front tank to be able to deal damage and tank for you. Look at this, he has 22 overall durability. And he has 9 attack with that too, so that is really powerful. We're going to grab him. And on top of that, we I can already tell we're going for Vampire Lord. Uh, even though Dust Devil is pretty good to be able to shuffle up the enemy team to make sure they're out of order, uh, we're going to go to, for Vampire Lord because that true damage, he deals a lot of true damage, and he can one-shot that, that, that. He can one-shot pretty much anything in Arena. So uh, he's really good to have because he goes right past the armor. And now we just took a uh, brown purple, so from process of elimination on colors, we have, will have to go with our flame cannon here. Uh, flame cannon, not particularly good, but it is our only uh, color pick that we can get that's really good. That uh, Chimera that was there might have actually been another good pick if we did want to have a little bit of mana conflict. But I did go for the flame cannon instead. What I'm going to do with this is uh, put it right over there. If it can get that 20% chance for a burn off, it can be do a lot of devastating damage. But uh, that AOE damage is not going to be able to do too much on this team composition. But we have a good tank over there, and we have our Vampire Lord doing true damage. It doesn't always matter if all of your troops are good in Arena. You just need basically those main two that are going to be doing everything. Like our main tank up here, and then one troop that's just going to be completely dominating the rest. So let's keep going. So now we're on to draft number seven. And the music just cut out. Or never mind, it didn't cut out. Okay, we don't want zombie. We uh, Priestess is situational. Uh, she's really good at making sure you don't lose because she cleanses an ally, one of the only cleanses you can get in Arena, and gives them eight armor and then gives them barrier. It is really good at making sure you can survive, but it is slow because all of that is just uh, to help you survive, not to do damage. So we are going to go for this ogre here. Like I mentioned in the last one, really strong in uh, being able to tank and do damage for us. Uh, now from our selection, uh, due to uh, one not wanting to get mana conflict, we are going to have to go with Banshee. 
deals uh, seven damage to an enemy and transforms all blue to red and does that at a two to one ratio it can do a little bit of decent damage this ratio is actually uh the same thing as um vampire lord except it's not true damage but it has a convert on top of that which can make it good it can accumulate a lot of red gems so if we can get a good red troop in our ultra rare uh select if this team will work uh, pretty well so let's get banshee and we do have a red pick it is unfortunately our only red pick here but we are going to have to go for it so let's take up this berserker again and we'll just go in this order put that there put that there and in this case we may even want to put hero in front of it it depends what your weapon is or what you want to uh do because uh early on you won't have that many good weapons but later on in the game you have like a wide selection like if i go in my weapons right now we have everything <laughs> pretty much everything or i think everything i don't even know at this point there's so many weapons but yeah uh so this is the order you want to go in. and banshee will be able to make those reds it'll convert the blues into reds which will help with uh filling up berserker and by the time the ogre dies berserker will have like 12 or 16 attack and he'll just be able to one shot everything so yeah that's that team let's keep going okay draft number i don't know what are we at now eight i think i'm keeping track but even on my thing that i'm keeping track on i'm starting to lose track okay right here skill guard gonna strike going a little bit quicker because i feel like i'm taking forever to start to do these and i don't have like a timer set up anywhere oh and we got poison master again it seems almost like the other draft we got not too long ago and uh that was blue purple wait didn't we get this exact same draft um not too long ago look at this blade dancer uh poison master and hero and back i think that was the exact same one we got um like what <laughs> three minutes ago three drafts ago but yeah okay that was the next one move on to number nine okay uh here again we have skill guard this one is a bit of a choice between the satire and the um skill guard i'm gonna go skill guard just because uh skill guard it's been buffed recently so it's quite powerful uh next up i'm gonna go for the vampire lord again uh mostly because we have skill guard with poison plus now we have a uh, true damage on top of that so we'll really be able to kill things uh really quick with that combination so we are gonna go vampire lord uh, unfortunately vampire lord does remove all of our reds but that shouldn't be too big a problem since vampire lord will be our main damage source instead of our scale guard the scale guard will just pick up the scraps of reds that will come on occasionally so we are going to go with that and from that we did just take a uh, brown purple so we do have to go with some kind of mana conflict here i think i'm going to make it a uh, sacrificial priest in this instance Mostly because we don't have a good attack here. These both only have six. We already have enough uh, tank between the other two and our hero. So I am going to go Sacrificial Priest on this. Uh, one really unique thing about Sacrificial Priest is for one, his ability actually scales pretty well in the arena. It does uh, 12 damage randomly split among all enemies. It's boosted by the sacrificed uh, allies attack, which isn't too much. Most of them will probably have like something like six or seven. So this will only do about 18 to 20 total in most instances. But the really unique thing that this has is it has a 30% chance to summon an Abrath. Abrath is a legendary and it will summon, has a 30% chance to summon a level uh, 15 Abrath. So if it gets that summon off, you are basically set to win that match. So we are going to get this uh, Sacrificial Priest. Uh, order here, of course, put our highest attack up front. Um... The rest of this order, it might seem a little bit weird, but I am going to have the 5 attack uh, scale guard up front there. Uh, mostly because uh, Vampire Lord is going to be denying its mana. So we want to make sure we do kill off our scale guard if it happens to get to that. And you just set your um, uh, hero to something else that isn't either of those colors. So let's keep going now. On to the 10th one. So what does the 10th draft have in store for us? We have Orc Priestess Rockworm. Rockworm, another really strong common. Deals seven damage to the last enemy and then create seven brown gem. It can take out an entire team just by itself. We want it. <laughs> Doesn't even matter what the other choices are. You'd normally go with Rockworm. Okay, here we have a little bit of a choice. We can actually go for a little bit of uh, mana conflict here and go with the Dust Devil. Um, because uh, we'd actually be able to loop a little bit because the Rockworm will be able to get extra turns just on its own. Which will also help fill our dust devil i am gonna go the safe route though and go with dryad and hope that we get a green troop for our last one or we could just set our hero weapon to a green troop so we're gonna go with that 
And now we just took a yellow blue. So we do want to try getting green. And I think I am going to go with the giant spider, even though we block on blues. Uh, giant spider, of course, is a summoner. It summons a uh, level 12 uh, spider swarm, which is red. But as I said earlier, uh, Arena does them all up to level 15. So that will be a level 15 when it comes in. So, and since we don't have red in this team, that would work pretty well as well. And I basically put it like this. I'd actually put my hero up front in this case. Since it will likely have the highest attack, we only have 5, 6, and 6. You'd probably have like 7 or 8 attack there. So it would actually be the highest attack on our team. Even if it was 6, it would still work out pretty good. Since all these other troops are pretty tanky. And at that point, Dryad would just be uh, healing. I mean, uh, getting mana for our giant spider. Who would then uh, probably be giving mana to our hero. Who would probably have a purple weapon. Since it converts to purples. So uh, let's keep going. And that was our 10th draft. So let's go on to 11. Let's see, 11th. We have Priestess, Pride Hunter, and Golem. Uh, interesting combination here. Uh, Golem also has relatively high stats for a common. I'm considering getting it. It uh, explodes a gem, which will give you some mana. And then it reduces all enemy armor by 4. Boosted at a 1 to 1 on the brown gems destroyed. So it's pretty good at getting out that initial armor. It's actually a really good first slot. Since you can get its ability off once or twice and then you don't need to worry about it. And that explode gem makes it a really good at board control. So let's get that. Um, of these picks, I would have gone for that wolf knight. But we do have mana conflict with it now. It's a really good true damage. It actually has some of the highest true damage that you can get in arena. Because if an enemy is in injured, it's doing 11 damage to them. But we are going to go with dryad due to the mana conflict. So we can keep healing our golem. Have it as a tank. <laughs> And we just took a uh, yellow blue. So we actually got a perfect pick right here of uh, Chimera. Chimera. And uh, let's reorder these. And we'd probably go with uh, something like this. Um, maybe even up there. But I mostly want to put it back. Because our Dryad is going to be feeding this mana over and over again. And um, uh, Chimera actually has a pretty good ability. Because it has both the burn and the poison. And even though it attacks the healthiest, it's just going to keep dragging their HP down. And it's really good against uh, very tanky teams. It's actually one of the uh, quickest troops you can get to have on your team for Arena. So, let's keep going. And we're about halfway done. On to number 12. And of course, at any point here, I don't know if you guys want to watch through all this. I'm kind of just doing this so you guys have enough examples to go by if you kind of just ever want to have some kind of source to go to just to kind of know how to draft if you want to just go to the let's play now i'll have a redeem code on the other episode as well as showing an actual run so you might want to do that or just keep uh, stay here watch we're going to be going through another 13 or 14 however many is okay anyways on to ghoul deal eight damage to the first enemy and reduce all their skills by one then destroy six gems he actually got reworked uh recently and his rework makes him really good in arena so we are getting him And of these picks, we have Wolf Knight again, but we just took a brown, so we do have Mana Conflict. Again, we have Mana Conflict with the bar uh, Barbarian too, so we are going to have to go with the Succubus. Even though Death Mark isn't particularly good, it is good at targeting on the hero, because the hero is most likely going to be the enemy's uh, tankiest uh, troop that they have on their team. So your uh, Death Mark will instantly kill it if you can get it to trigger, so it will be uh, somewhat good to have. So we are going to go with the Succubus. <laughs> And since that was red purple, we do want to go for the anti mana conflict and go with the Naga Queen. Uh, one thing I do want to mention here this is the first time we see a Black Beast. Black Beast is one of the troops that you can put on your team if you want. It doesn't matter what your team composition is, you can win if you have a Black Beast. You put Black Beast in your second slot or first slot, depending on what your team is, and then you just devour your allies as you need to. Maybe if they're getting low, maybe if they got like burn or end or poison on them. Yeah, you, go, you want to get them out of the way. Uh, maybe one of your allies has a shield on it and you want to get it on Black Beast. Whatever the case is, you do want to have a... If your like, team is that you just drafted is really bad, you want to pick a Black Beast and it will be instantly be good. Just keep devouring the troops you don't need on your team and Black Beast will just keep buffing until it can one-shot any enemy on the team. But we are going to go with the Naga Queen just because it doesn't have any mana conflict. And because of that, we're going to put that up front. And um, and those would be our basically our composition. 
So Naga Queen would keep uh, filling up her succubus. We'd have our uh, hero on yellow. And we'd have this for the extra damage. Plus we'd be gaining uh, 6 mana whenever I cast that across your team. So that worked pretty good. Let's keep going. And now we've have hit the halfway mark. We are at draft 13. So let's see. What do we have here? Uh, of these, probably going to go for Musketeer. It's the easiest direct damage. Uh, Archon Statue. We haven't even gotten this one for a while. It can do quite a bit of damage. It deals 9 damage to an enemy, but if it has any HP damage, it's going to be doing an extra 8. So that's a total of 17 damage. I am going to go for the Banshee, though, because we just picked a red troop, and we want to be able to feed it red. And they're both a targetable spell. And we just took a uh, purple uh, yellow. So due to not having mana conflict, we are going to take Weavern. Uh, the Weavern is a little weak. It deals 8 damage to the first enemy, then poisons the last enemy. Uh, normally, you don't want to pick it too often, but it does have 9 attack. So what we're going to do, we are going to pick it. And since we have somewhat tanky other troops, we're just going to put it in back. And there's our team already. And we have covering all colors. And we have a good attack there, plus uh, a targetable attack. And a targetable attack that will feed the other targetable attack. So a fairly good team right there as well. So let's keep going. On to draft 14. We have Gaul, Priestess, and uh, Taros. We're going to go Gaul. Has the highest damage potential. Uh, of these picks, uh, Goblin Shaman is really good. Actually, we have uh, the two really good uh, green gem spawners on our team. But these three would actually make a really good team. Unfortunately, we can only pick one. So we are going to have to go with um, the Dark Maiden. Dark Maiden does poison and it deals a decent amount of damage. But the main thing is it does it for only six mana cost. So that's a really good ratio return. So we are going to go for that. And since we just took a red green, we do have to go for some kind of mana conflict here. And uh, since we don't have a high attack, we might want to go with Yeti. We could go with Ancient Horror. Um... Could I even go with Goblin Rocket too? Uh, it really depends what kind of play method we want to go here. Goblin Rocket would give you a lot more uh, board potential because it gains an extra turn off its explosion. I think in this instant, I would go with uh, not the Yeti actually. Yeti is a little bit weak in Arena because it deals 9 damage to an enemy and double if it's frozen. But there's not really many ways that you can freeze an enemy in Arena. So we are going to probably go with the uh, either the Ancient Horror or the Goblin Rocket. I think in this case... Uh, Ancient Horror. Just have the high attack up front. Uh, we're going to have the Ghoul up front there, even though we have the Dark Maiden. Mostly because we want the Dark Maiden's uh, poison to be able to kill off any of the last enemies. Plus it only takes 6 mana, which is a lot quicker than having to get the Ghoul's uh, 8 mana. And then you just set your her hero weapon to something else. So we would uh, go on to the next one from there. <clears throat> okay, on to 15. Let's see, what do we have here? Okay, Pride Hunter, uh, Quasit, and the Musketeer. The Quasit, you basically never want to pick. It's not too good. Uh, Pride Hunter, uh, either of these two would be really good. They both do the same amount of damage. But uh, for two mana more, uh, Pride Hunter will only hit the first troop, but it will also silence them. Uh, since we don't really need that, we are going to go with the Musketeer. One of the main reasons is um, basically all mana in Arena runs by threes. Because you aren't going to be able to set a mana or have anything like that. And so unless you have a troop on your team that's going to be destroying the board or getting you extra mana somehow. You want to try picking troops that have a uh, divisible by three uh, ratio of mana. Which I actually haven't <laughs> mentioned yet. But you do want to consider that when picking troops. Like even like why, based on what I just said. You want to go with Hippogriff right here because it has a divisible by three ratio. Like these, if you happen to get like three matches of three, you just got them to nine mana, and then you have to waste a whole nother match just to get it back up. So we are going for the Hippograph. We also need it because we need a front tank or damage source, I mean. And we just took a uh, yellow uh, green. So due to not getting mana conflict, we are going to have to go for the Watcher. And in this order, we'd go with that. That, and basically we just order them in attack order. And your hero would probably only be like 6, 7, or 8 attack. So that kind of go there too. Just make sure you have a back tank. And um, the Watcher that I just picked is okay. It does have true damage. It deals 7 to a single target and then 1 true damage to adjacent ones. Um, it's normally only good if you have... Really good if you have a status effect though. Because if an enemy has a status effect on them, they uh, this troop will drain their mana. 
And that's basically that setup, so let's go to the next one. Okay, on to draft 16. Okay, now this is, might be a little bit of a hard choice between the Goblin and the Ogre. Also, whenever you have the choice between the Satyr and the Goblin, always go Goblin. Goblin is better. Mostly because of the divisible by 3 ratio and the fact that Goblin gets to choose any target, whereas uh, the Satyr only gets to choose the uh, back target. So, uh, this is a choice between Ogre and Goblin. I'm going to go Goblin. Uh, from here... We'd want to go White or Wolf Knight. Both are really good true damage. Uh, we haven't seen White yet. It steals 6 life from an enemy. So it deals 6 true damage and gains 6 life. That's pretty effective. Then it creates 5 purples. We currently don't have a purple on the team. We could use a purple weapon. But uh, Wolf Knight here, he does have a higher damage potential for a lower mana cost. So I am going to go with the Wolf Knight. And after that, we just took a brown yellow. And it would have been good to take the Sacred Guardian. But of course, for non-mana conflict, we are going to go with the other good choice and go with Berserker. Uh, Winter Knight is... I mean, Winter Knight. Winter Wolf is actually a, a really good pick in Arena as well. All three of these are actually outstanding picks to have for your Ultra Rare. Um, I haven't mentioned uh, Winter Wolf yet. It freezes and then places Hunter's Mark on the first group. Uh, then deals 9 damage to them. And then if there are 10 or more uh, blue gems, it creates another 5. So it does quite a bit. What makes this really effective is that freeze plus Hunter's Mark. It's a really good skull counter. Plus, it'll make sure you do twice as much skull damage to them. So, it's really good all around the Winter Wolf. But we are going to go Berserker due to the uh, mana conflict. Put Berserker up front. Um, if I was actually doing this team, I'd probably place it like something like that. But because your hero is probably a little bit weaker, you might actually want to put your Berserker up front. It basically depends on you. So, um, Goblin, you don't want to have in the back. Uh, as you can see, our Wolf Knight is two armor tankier. So, we do want to have our Wolf Knight there instead. So, that would basically be that team. So, let's keep going. On to draft 17. <laughs> okay, of these, you uh, basically never want to pick Thrall or Orc. So we're going to go on to the um, Snow Sprite. Another one of the only few troops in Arena that actually has a freeze. Uh, deals 4 damage to an enemy and then freezes them. Not too much damage, but that freeze can come in handy. And it's only a 6 mana cost, so it's not too bad. It's fairly tanky too. So it's a little bit weak, but it's not. If your cho other choices are bad, it's better than having something else. Well, here we have three really good choices. We are going to want to go with true damage, though, because true damage is better. I am going to go with uh, Miss Stalker in particular because it can get stronger over time with the uh, gain three magic on uh, whenever it kills someone. Plus, it has that poison, which will also chip them down if we start losing other troops. So we are going to go with the uh, that. And now we just took a red purple. So we do, unfortunately, have mana conflict now. And we are going to have to pick a uh, brown purple. Of these, I'm probably going to go with Watcher. As I just mentioned not too long ago, if you have a troop that can do a status effect, we have Poison here. We have Mist Stalker here who will uh, do that. And if Mist Stalker happens to not kill, we'll just have our Watcher clean it up for us. And of this order, we're actually going to want to put probably Watcher up front just because it has the higher attack. Uh, Snow Spirit, despite it having a lower attack, uh, we are going to want to put it all the way in the back there. Um, just have it as a bank tech. You don't really need it too much. You kind of just want it to have a freeze or just do that last hit of that little bit of damage. And of course, we'll probably want to use Miss Stalker instead for last hitting. But yeah, that's uh, that team. Let's keep going. Number 18. I believe it's 18 now. What do we have? Wow, Ghoul Pride Hunter. Sounds like Ghoul. Alchemist, Hellhound, and the Night Terror. Uh, we are going to go with Night Terror here. <clears throat> has really good damage. It, it hits the weakest every single time, so that's also pretty good. And it has a 2 to 1 ratio on the blues it removes. So it'll be good if someone picks or against uh, things like Valkyrie and some other pretty common picks that you might see. So we are going to pick the uh, Night Terror. And we just took a red purple. So due to no mana conflicts, we're going to want to take the Night Coronet. And in this order, we're probably just going to go there, there, and put her here in the back there. Uh, Night Cornet's pretty good. Deals 6 damage to the first and last enemy. And then 2 to 1 on the purples removed. So it can get quite a bit of damage potential if there are a lot of purples on the board. And Night Terror will help in that by removing blues. And it'd go. Uh, this team would go pretty well. So let's keep going. 
On to the 19th. Okay, 19th arena draft. What do we have? We have Serpent, Zombie, and um, Goblin. Uh, Serpent can actually be good. Uh, depends on what kind of team you want to go with. It poisons the first two enemies, then creates nine red gems, then uh, gains four life. Uh, that is fairly decent if you want to try feeding red gems or something. I am, however, going to be going with Goblin just because it is uh, three armor tankier, and we want to make sure our damage source is somewhat alive. Serpent does end up gaining HP, but it needs to be able to cast first. Oh, um, Winter Knight is actually a really, really good pick. It explodes a gem, gains four armor, uh, boosted by the blue gem destroyed at a two times ratio. So it's going to be gaining a lot of armor there. And then uh, it gains barrier as well. So a really, really tanky troop. Unfortunately, regardless of what we took, that green or that blue on that first pick, we were going to block that. So of these, we are going to gamble with Alchemist. You'd either want to set your hero weapon to a yellow if you're on PC mobile, or you're just going to have to hope your last troop is will use yellow. So we're going to go with Alchemist. And luckily, we did get a troop with yellow. Unfortunately, though, it is not a troop that does damage, but um, we are going to have to take it uh, just to make sure we cover all the colors. And at this point, we'd want to put him up front. Uh, Goblin, we're going to put a little bit more on the back since we don't have that much damage source. We want to make sure he survives. And Hero, you'd probably want to put on either a yellow weapon or the blue that it doesn't use, or on a yellow-blue weapon if you happen to have uh, both colors on one. And at that point, you just have Herdmaster cleansing all, which is really good. But you don't really have much damage source. You just have Goblin and maybe your hero weapon if you set it to something. Um, a team like this might actually be too slow for Arena. What I sometimes do is what you've seen me do like 18 times now. Is if you get a fairly bad team that you think, or it's maybe it's not that bad. Like you see, we're covering every color. If we just set this to a blue weapon, we just covered every color. But if your Arena team isn't too good, don't feel afraid to just click that retire button. And just X out of it. It's only going to cost you about 750 gold to be able to go out. Like, you get a bit of it back. So, it's only costing you about 800 gold to back out. And you don't really need to worry about it. If you think your team that you just picked is going to cost you, like, an extra 10 to 20 minutes, just pay that extra gold to repick your team. And you'll be able to um, get a much faster team. And you'll overall be able to save time and gold. So, it's don't feel afraid to have to, uh, like, retire once or twice if you're out over your initial draft. If you want to be able to get that better team that will be able to go uh, quickly in Arena. So here, we already know here, Skill Guard. Uh, also, this is our 20th draft, by the way. <laughs> uh, here, we have a decent choice between the Cockatrice or the Warlord. Uh, this Dinjin here, you basically never want to uh, use it in its current state. It is really, really weak for some reason. I don't know why. But uh, basically, never use it ever in its current state. Uh, we have a choice now between a damage source or a uh, disable and uh, it's a little bit of a hard choice I am going to be going with the disable though mostly because it has more durability it has two more HP two more armor and it's going to be helping us to make sure if they have a high attack or a high uh, a something that's going to be attacking quick we'll be able to disable them so we are going to go with that and we just took a brown uh, yellow which is really unfortunate because we just have sacred guardian right there and now we have conflict with brown so I am going to have to go with the Ancient Arm. Main reason, he has 9 attack. And since we have low attack right now, we're going to want to get that attack up. And you basically just want to use uh, this position. We'd have a Scale Guard as a main damage source. Of course, we have a 9 attack up front, which will be doing work. And then we just set our hero to whatever else we need. So let's keep going. On to the 21st draft. So let's keep going. What do we have this time? Closet, Satyr, Musketeer. Let's go Musketeer. No, Ranger and uh, Rhinax. All of these are fairly bad. Of these, I'd probably go with Ranger. Mostly because it has a 6 damage to a uh, targeted enemy. And then it deals 8 damage randomly split among all enemies. This 8 damage is particularly good. Because you can use that damage, the targetable damage, to kill someone. Then that split damage to kill someone who's very low. Like maybe 3 HP, 2 HP, 1 HP. So, uh, what, this ranger is actually uh, somewhat decent. Uh, definitely not the best you can get, but uh, if you don't have better choices, it's definitely something good to consider. It also worked pretty well with our musketeer. And we just took a yellow uh, green, so we are going to have to have mana conflict somewhere here. Um, 
Let's see. This one is actually a little bit of a choice. It basically depends what kind of play style you go with. Any of these would be a fairly good choice. And I think in this case, I would go with the Knight Coronet, mostly because it has the highest damage potential of anything we have here. So in these positionings, I'd probably actually keep my hero in the first slot, put Knight Coronet up there. Or actually, um, I'd probably go double color on uh, that. And then I'd probably go with something like this. Put our Ranger, or actually put our hero in the back. And it actually, there's pretty much a lot of ways you can order this one since they're all pretty similarly statted. So probably something like that, and we just basically go from there. Musketeer kind of just for cleanup, you can even switch that. It really just matters how you uh, want to play a team sometimes, and what you've, works for you. Because everyone has different play styles of how they like to do teams, so uh, that's that team. Let's keep going. What is this, 20 second now? Let's see what we get. Skeleton, Golem, Thrall. Uh, probably Skeleton or Golem. Personally, I'd go for this Golem. Uh, Dryad, Cockroaches, or Night Terror. We don't have that much damage, so let's actually go with the Night Terror this time. And we just took a Red Purple, so from process of elimination, we want to take Druid. Druid is a pretty good damage source as well. Uh, Night Terror, we want up front because it's stealing our own blues. So we want to make sure it dies off our team pretty quick. Uh, we're actually going to keep our Druid in the back because it's pretty tanky. It has uh, 24 total uh, durability between its HP and armor, which is very, very, very high. Same as, um, uh, what was it? The Berserker, except uh, distributed in armor and HP more evenly. But yeah, it deals 8 damage to 2 enemies and then uh, 1 to adjacent. So that's a damage potential of 20 damage, which is pretty good for 12 mana. And you basically just go with that team and go from there. So let's keep going. On to the 23rd draft. I don't know. <laughs> we might have lost count. We might do one or uh, one more or one less, but we'll find out. <laughs> At this point, if any of you are still watching, definitely leave a like if you are enjoying this. I can't, actually couldn't really believe anyone would actually go through this many. But if you find this enjoyable, I find that amazing. <laughs> I mostly just wanted to make this to help people out, but it's starting to get pretty long at this point, so hopefully this is helpful. Uh, I'm going now for this rock room here. Uh, Rockworm, of course, is basically a troop that could solo an entire enemy team if you use it correctly. So we're going to go with that Rockworm. Uh, we could actually go with Templar here because uh, Rockworm actually does work good with multiple brown chips. And um, what we're actually going to go do instead, though, is go with this Acolyte. Acolyte creates nine uh, brown gems, so it's going to be really good to assist our Rockworm. And we just took a blue-purple. So from process of elimination, we do want to go with the Twisted Hero to make sure we cover all the colors. And uh, from this point, we'd probably want a Twisted Hero up front, since he's not really doing too much. He's creating nine, five red, five purple, and then gaining, giving four to a random skill. That'd be pretty good if it gives that magic to Burrow, I mean the uh, Rockworm. But uh, whatever it does, it's good, it doesn't do too much, so we mostly just want him up front to die. Uh, put that there. Uh, you have Hero in the back for back tank. And this whole team is basically just set up to make sure Rockworm can kill the enemy team over and over again. So that's that team. Let's keep going. Okay, what do we have next? Arena. Let's go. Okay, no. Uh, first time we've seen a Dire Wolf, I think, or that, or I just haven't explained it. A uh, Dire Wolf is a bit situational. It places Hunter's Mark on the an enemy, and if there are 10 or more green gems, uh, it you gain an extra turn. I am actually going to take it over the Snow Spirit, just because um, two times skull damage can be pretty good. Uh, especially if your hero already has something like 7, 8, or 9 attack, you're going to be doing quite a bit of damage. So if you're later in the game in Arena, you might want to consider it too. So we are going to go with that. Right off the bat, we shouldn't have. We already have green conflict with every single pick here. I am going to go with the Dark Maiden though, because it has such a cheap uh, spell. Plus it has that poison. And we are going to have to go with Grave Knight just to make sure we don't block uh, too many manas on our team. Uh, Grave Knight can be okay. It destroys an enemy's armor and then deals 7 damage. So if something has really high armor, it, it can be uh, really effective. So we're going to go with that. Uh, we don't really have a high attack in this team. Um, keep that there. Keep uh, Hero in the back for a back tank. Um, you could block your... Uh, Dire Wolf if you want, or just have it up front to make sure it can get the Hunter's Mark. Depends if you want the Hunter's Mark or not. Uh, this would be a really good instance in which um, the Black Beast would be good. 
since we don't really need our dire wolf in this team now so we could either kill that or kill our dark maiden or something like that depending on what we need if i actually got this team i'd probably just uh re-pick it if i have to so let's keep going and this is actually going to be our last pick this should be our 25th one so let's get into it what will our last picks give us okay we have centaur scout rockworm priestess we already know Cent uh, rockworm Steam turret, don't really need it, it's actually pretty weak. Uh, Sabertooth Flying and Stargazer. Stargazer isn't that good in Arena. Uh, has a really low ratio of only 4 to 1. And uh, since it doesn't have Empowered, it's basically uh, useless to a degree. So we're going to go with Sabertooth Flying. Really good in Arena because if it kills someone, it gains 5 magic. So it's going to be doing 14 damage after its first kill, 19 after its second. And by then, you're basically one-shotting the enemy team. So it is really powerful. You want to keep it in your third slot to make sure it doesn't die. So we're going to take that. Plus, we don't have any mana conflict, so that's very good. So uh, we're going to go with our... Uh, we got a green-blue there. So to make sure we don't have any colors going anywhere, we're going to take the red-yellow. I put this up front uh, to make sure it dies since it isn't particularly good. Uh, here we have a bit of a conflict because Rockworm and Sabertooth Line, we both want to have in our third slot. So in this instance, I'm going to keep my hero in the back to tank, and I am going to have my uh, my uh, Rockworm a little bit more up front, just to make sure our Sabertooth Flying can keep getting those last hits. So yeah, that will do it for showing you how to draft. If you have any questions about how to draft or anything about Arena, just leave it in the comment section below, and just let me know, and I'll be able to answer it for you. Well, that will do it for this video. Thanks for watching, and I was hopeful this was helpful. Goodbye.